I'm Ann Tagazantarni from The Paint Spot in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, an art supply store run by artists and for artists. So here at the Nest Gallery, we have a collaborative printmaking show with Sarah Norquay and Mark Dutton. And, uh, I am one of the two artists that have produced this body of work. I'm a printmaker. Um, I primarily work in relief, which means woodcut or lino cut. In this case, this body of work was done with woodcuts at least my part of it, my half of it. I tend to work in bodies of work and this is a collaborative project. I've done lots of them and uh, this is a particular one I really enjoyed. It took about four, almost five years to complete and we're thrilled that we get to show it here at the Paint Spot. I'm a, a graphic designer by trade and a printmaker, um, screen printer for the last 12 years or so. And that's, I decided early on to just stick with screen printing. There's so many different processes, techniques that you can learn. And I just figured I don't have enough time to learn everything. So I'll just stick to one and try and figure out how that works. Well, what about this technique is appealing to you? You know, I took printmaking in art school way back in the seventies and it was the only technique I enjoyed. And partly I like it because you can do it anywhere. Uh, you can even print by hand. You don't even need a press. In this case, these were done on a press. But um, there's something about the graphic quality, the positive, negative, just the, the act of cutting that I really enjoy. And um, I, I kind of, you know why? I don't know. I just, I've always liked it. And I came back to it after many, many years of not doing it. And when I moved back to Edmonton, I took a, a woodcut class with Tad Wazinski. And uh, actually, it was private lessons, and I just got completely hooked. And that's so I've pretty much done that in the last 12 years. I do etching occasionally and other things, but the relief printing is my main um, interest. What do you like about the collaboration process with Mark? Well, Mark was special, that's for sure. <laughs> he was the one who asked if we could do it, and I, I had got known for doing them. And sometimes, you know, collaborations don't always work, mm -hmm. but in this case, what we did was we set up a um, a kind of a structure for it and the idea was that no matter what the other person did it would have to be accepted mm -hmm. so there was no actual discussion about what we were doing it was more we each gave each other a background this is the, the, the beginning mm -hmm. uh, a background to work with and the other person had to print something on top mm -hmm. and so it was kind of like a conversation of course it was fun because you never knew what you were going to get so what do you like about this collaboration process with Sarah? Uh, it, there is a whole different way of thinking when you are receiving somebody's initial part of the work, the, the background, and you just sort of have to start at that point and you kind of react to, to what's in front of you as opposed to just starting from a blank sheet of paper or canvas. And it was always a challenge. And uh, Mark and I have very similar interests in color. I knew that beforehand because we both have a similar palette. We like similar colors. And um, he also had does quite graphic uh, style, and which suited is kind of like mine. So I thought that we we're a good match that way. And then our discussions were always fun. Sometimes humor came into it. Sometimes just playfulness. A lot of the, the playfulness came with just naming the pieces mm -hmm. and the whole idea of, of uh, marital bliss or, or some kind of collaboration where, where different topics come up and they, they resonate with the, the piece themselves. So could you tell me more about your favorite or most challenging piece from this body of work? Well, that's really interesting because of course when you set up a collaboration where you have to accept everything, because that's what you've decided you're going to do. Um, there are favorites, but every single piece has something that you like because you've been working on it. And um, so I could say a few things, like there's one piece that we've sold more than any other piece, so it becomes like the best seller. <laughs> I, I've run out of my copies of it. Um, and that's this one over here. The, um, uh, actually, what is it called? Falling Apart. Uh, that, that's our best seller. Um, I like it quite a bit. 
What advice would you give other artists uh, considering collaborative projects? Uh, just um, being open-minded to, to different ideas, different approaches, um, and uh, sort of expect that you might sort of just change your, your perspective about how you're approaching a piece, like stylistically, conceptually, yeah. Hmm. Well, I think you have to be pretty accepting because it, it just doesn't work otherwise. You have to set up your parameters, decide how you're going to proceed and what your limits are, and then, and then accept things as they happen. We always had an exit clause, which was if at any point you stop having fun, like you're not enjoying this, you just say so, and that's the end of it, it stops. I think you have to do that. You have to set up, it's almost like a contract. Mm -hmm. And we tried to keep it as open as possible. So our limitations were very few. Mm -hmm. um, in our first one, we had a size limitation. Uh, each of us had to produce a background for the other person. And I think we set the limit at six. Mm -hmm. um, is that right? Yeah. So we had 12 prints in the end. Each of us right. had six backgrounds right. and six tops. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we just, it was like no pressure, no, de no deadline. Uh, if, if at any point you're not enjoying it, please just speak up and say, I'm done, I don't wanna do this anymore. Right. <laughs> but we made it through two rounds and um, we talked about a third round, but then decided we, we better not. <laughs> So the second round was different. It didn't have a rectangle. So all you can see, these are more like yeah. objects floating. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a different limit that we placed on the second okay. round, but the process was the same. So could you tell me more about your favorite or most challenging piece in the show? I would say the most challenging piece to me was this one, in that Sarah had done the background mm -hmm. and for most of them, I was able to react pretty, pretty easily or quickly and figure out how I'm going to react to that image. And that particular piece, I'm sure that I had it for like two years. And I would look at it and I would think, no idea. And that was the last piece that I think we did. Yeah. And I'm happy enough with it now. Uh, but it just it uh, took took a long long time and other things that were just a really nice surprise were, were pieces that we sort of wondered or I wondered how is Sarah gonna approach mm -hmm. that background and completely surprised by the the result and, and happy with it when you really get to throw a challenge yeah 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 my absolute favorite is this first one over here down at Total um, Impossible Dance. And I can't even tell you why it's my favorite. I just, there's something about it that just, yeah, speaks to my interest. I'm a collector, I collect prints. And I only, only collect things that I really like that speak to me in some way. And this one, if I hadn't made part of it, <laughs> I would still buy it. <laughs> you, know? you had a question. Yeah, I, how you actually thought about figuring out what was what you were going to put on top of what I gave you. Like, did you think in terms of color or theme or like subject matter or shape or like what, what kinds of things did you think of? Like, it, I mean, I'm talking about like a generalized yeah. kind of topic at, when you got something from me, like how did you? It was you know, just sort of stepping back and looking at, at what you presented me and trying mm -hmm. to figure out what what elements might make sense in that space? What colors make sense? What scale makes sense in terms of how busy the pieces that you've given me or quiet or um, vibrant or subtle subtle colors? That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I found it really um, each piece was just a, a new challenge. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like to me that it just, um, I just never knew how I was going to react. Well, and lots of times <laughs> giving you a background and then seeing you, seeing what you put on top of it was completely outside of my 
wheelhouse in terms of ideas or how I would resolve that. But it was it was refreshing and nice to see a different different reaction to that. Yeah, I think there were times when I was making a background that I thought, oh. I wonder if he can do something with this, like a kind of a challenge yeah. in a way. Because I found them challenging. Yeah. And I mean, of course, I enjoyed it. It had that game quality to it. Well, that's true. There were some in the second round where just giving you background shapes, reacting to what shapes you'd already given me, mm -hmm. and sort of thinking, okay, I'm going to do something that's different than that, that right. just Contact. takes you in a different, different direction. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're Thank very you. welcome. But like I said, there's every single one of them has something of interest to me personally. Um, I don't think there's one that I just think, oh, I wish we hadn't made that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The show runs from April 1st to May 11th, and all original prints are for sale at $145 on frame. So you're invited to come take a closer look at all of the prints.